Hello everyone, welcome to this video. I'm Janeda and I will show you the step by step that I will provide on how to become from guard to signaler in this journey. I guess I decided to make a voice reveal because there's a lot to mention here and I didn't want to add a bunch of text and you read it for the whole video so I will just talk to make the video length shorter. The signaler training for this video will be taken as a signaler training 1.0 meaning if the signaler training 2.0 comes out some parts of this video will be outdated. I don't even know if 2.0 is going to be released despite the fact that the training 2.0 was proposed 3 years ago. Before I start this video, you must have a Discord account and be a member of SCR official Discord server. You must be a guard as well and be at least 13 years old to be eligible for the rank of signaler but this might change in training 2.0. Anyway, this journey takes a lot of time to get there because there's a lot of progress and I will mention each one of them. So. I have created my own stages for this video and by the end of this video, you will know the process of this journey easier. Please grab your food and water and enjoy watching this long video. In this video, we will break it down into 4 major stages. Of course, you cannot just apply the signaler application without the knowledge of signaling. Let's start by heading over to stage 1, learning the basics of signaling. In this stage, we will break it down into 4 minor stages. The first one, which you definitely must do first, is reading the signaler guides if you haven't already. The signaler guides can be found on SCR official discord server, then under the operations info channel and by clicking this link under signaling guide, which will take you into google drive. I will also link the guide down in the description of this video. There are two different signaler guides as you can see here. The Signaler Setup Desk Guide and Signaler Operations Guide. Let's head over to the Operations Guide first since this is where you start to learn about signaling. This guide where it covers all the information about signaling will be shown here. You should first fully read and understand the guide so you will gain knowledge about signaling and will help you for the future signaler application, trainings, and the signaling itself. There is a lot of information to learn here so I will not mention everything in this guide. But as I mentioned earlier, you can go to the guides with the link in the operations info channel or down in the description of this video and take your time to read them. It's also recommended to read before continuing this video. Once you're finished reading this guide, we can head over to the signaler setup desk guide leading us to the next minor stage, setting up signals. What exactly is setting up signals? Setting up signals is where you will change signals to red that collide, cross, merge, or conflict with another track once you just sat on the desk to avoid colliding signals. What exactly is colliding signals? Colliding signals are considered when two or more signals are both green or yellow that collide or merge. It's important to avoid colliding signals especially when you just sat on a desk. This is to avoid possible s-pads for drivers which is one of the main purposes for signaling. Anyway, let's actually head over to setting up signals. You can find the setup guide right next to the operations guide. There are 7 zones for the whole network. This guide teaches you on how to set up on each zone and you need to memorize the setup on each and one of them. You should time yourself for setting up signals on each zone as there is a time limit for this on signal trainings which I will explain later in this video. I recommend you practice setting up signals on the VIP or private server in game before signaling actual trains because that's one of the first things you must do when sitting on a desk. I know it takes time to memorize the setup but as you practice more and more you will eventually memorize the setups. When setting up signals with drivers in your zone, please do not change a signal to red in front of the driver, that is not allowed. This will cause possible s-pad. Instead, set the other signal to red that conflicts with the driver's track and then set it back to the original setup after the driver passes that signal. In some cases, when sitting on a desk, let's say there's actually two trains about to merge, but their signal was both cleared because you just sat on the desk. I believe you're allowed to change one of the signals to red in this case. Obviously, the one who has lower priority will be set their signal to red and it's recommended to tell the driver for that. 
if the driver is fast after setting that signal to red, you should make an apology video for this. Just kidding, please do not make an apology video, that sounds dumb. You can tell the reason to the driver and apologize, then you're good to go, I think. Anyway, if you think you have memorized the setups and wanna move on to the next one, let's proceed to the next minor stage, signaling trains. After practicing setting up signals, you may go ahead and practice signaling trains by going in any private server of the game with your friends driving for you to practice. If you don't have any friends or people to drive for you, don't worry, I got your back. There is this one this good server that contains private ship. It's called Papa Inner Shift, where you can sign up or ask for a signal slot if available, and the community will drive for you to practice. Additionally, one of a supervisor or a qualified signaler will advise your signaling skills. If there are any mistakes, they will inform or correct you, and use them to improve your signaling skills. If you're interested for joining the server, the link is in the description. Anyway, I will show you a gameplay of me signaling zone A in the public server, and I will give you advice and ideas when I'm signaling. It'll be quite long as well, but after watching my gameplay, you get the idea and you will learn from me, so sit back, relax, and enjoy this gameplay. Once you get to the signaling desk, check all the areas within your zone, and check where all trains are going. It's also recommended to tell the chat that the signal is in manual control in your zone. You must balance between setting up signals and signaling trains. You can set up however you like, as long as there are no colliding signals. I prefer the original setup. However, when it comes to signaler trainings, please use the original setup that was in the guide, not your own setup. Otherwise, you will have a possibility of failing the training. There is 2SO0 coming from Stepford High Street, whose destination is Stepford Central, which can only go to Platform 3 at Stepford East. Any destination other than S will go to Platform 4. So, I will set this other signal to red since there are no trains coming from St. Helens Bridge before clearing the signal for 2SO0. It seems like there is one VO7 coming from St. Helens Bridge, which will go to Platform 4 at Stepford East, meaning 2SO0 and 1VO7 will not collide with each other. So, no need to change signals for 1VO7 because it was already cleared for them. After that, I will continue finishing the rest of the setup. We have another situation here, since there are no trains at Stepford East, platforms 1 and 2, these two trains will not collide with each other before entering the station. I will clear one of their signals once they're about to reach the final signal before Stepford East. Since Doty Ozo is now reaching Stepford East, I can change this final signal before Stepford East or to LO0. While you're signaling, don't forget to roll back signals to its original setup. After trains passing its several signals, especially for signals that have its rollback disabled. We have 2VO9 at Beachley Platform 4, and they're about to cross two tracks when that train is departing from the station. Set these two signals to red before clearing 2VO9, especially when it has triggered the TRTS. It seems like 3v28 has spawned at Beachley sightings. I can clear that train because 2v09 haven't got the RTS yet. Of course, remember to set the other signal to red before clearing the shunt signal which is the triangle signal here. Then, you can change the signals in the triangle junction for 3v28 again if there are no other trains. Sometimes, I check their departure time and check the current time in the bottom left side of the screen. When the current time is close to the departure time, that train will trigger to RTS very soon, unless their lateness was already late which can only load passengers for at least 20 seconds. I decided to clear that signal because their TRTS will trigger soon. Since 
since the train is not reporting, I can clear this signal before entering Beachley. Since there are no trains coming to the terminating platforms at Beachley, I only do this when the terminating platforms are empty. While you're signaling, be sure to keep an eye on any TRTS by checking if the platform flashes yellow and any flashing circle in the fully train list panel on your right screen. Also, there will be yellow arrows on any side of your panel screen when there is one or more TRTS within your zone. It is important to check them immediately when it pops up and then clear the train if necessary. Be also sure to keep an eye on the public and operations chat in case there may be a person who needs your assistance. However, signaling trains has more priority than communicating in chats. Another situation here. 2V09 and 2D00 is about to pass the same junction, but there's one problem. We're not quite sure if 2V09 is going straight or the left track, but you can actually check where 2V09 is going by looking at a signal CCTV camera. Okay, the white lights there are called feather signals, and it tells you if that train is going straight or left track for this case. Since the feather signal is lit, 2V09 is going to the left track meaning that 2v09 and 2d00 will not collide with each other. Due to this, I can safely clear the signal for 2d00 to the same junction as 2v09 without possible collisions. As you can see, 2v09 passes the signal, and 2d00 passes the signal as well without any problems. Another way of finding out where 2D00 was going is by looking at the head code's destination, which is letter D. This means their destination is Willowfield. That head code will be going straight, not going to the right, because that's where you can go to Willowfield. Due to this, I can safely clear the signal for 3V30 to the same junction as 2D00 without possible collisions. As you can see, they have successfully passed the same junction without any problems. After that, I may set them back to its original setup. Let's look for this one. I will check 2v14 where they were going by checking out its further signals. As you can see, it's lit meaning this train is going to the left track. This means I can safely clear the signal because that train won't collide with another track. Okay, 2v14 is about to reach their last station. The only available platform for 2v14 is platform 6, meaning they will go to platform 6 when reaching the station. This also means they do not collide with 9E00 that is currently departing. Due to this, I can safely clear the signal for 2v14 to the same junction as 9E00 without possible collisions. As you can see, they have successfully passed that same junction without any problems. This will be the last situation for this gameplay. We have 9A of 0 and River 33 about to pass the same junction. Again, we will look at 9A of 0's destination to find out where they were going. Unlike the previous ones, the head coach's destination, which is letter E, this means their destination is Edge Mead, so that head code will be going right, not straight this time, because that's where you can go to Edge Mead. This means they will collide with each other. Due to this, 3v33 will be held with the red signal, letting 9 e 0 to pass first, before clearing 3v33 to avoid possible collisions. I let 9 e 0 to go first because I cannot set that signal to red, because they were already in the front of the signal, and 9E00 has higher priority than 3V33. Before leaving the desk, make sure that there are no more problems within your zone. After leaving the desk, I recommend telling the chat that your zone is now back to automatic. And that's it for this gameplay. 
I hope you have learned and get the idea from me. You can use this gameplay as a guide for your practice for signaling trains. Let's proceed to preparation for signal application and trainings. This stage is just making sure that you have learned the signaler guides, setting up signals, and signaling trains. If you have learned and gained knowledge for that, you can now prepare and wait for the upcoming signaler application to open and attend signaler trainings. By the way, you need to apply and pass the signaler application first before you can attend signaler trainings. By the time when the signaler application opens, you already have knowledge about signaling. This will be a good start for you to fill an application. Let's now proceed to the details of signaler application leading us to stage 2, the signaler application. Signaler application is where you can fill out an application form. It can be found on SCR official Discord server, then under the application forms channel and by clicking this link that says SCR signaler, which will take you into Google Forms. If the form looks like this, the application is currently closed, but if the form looks like this, then the application is open for the amount of time. You will be notified as a guard once the signaler managers announce that the signaler application is open, which will look like this. Before we get into the details for this application, please do not ask for answers or give answers to other people. If got, you will face a blacklist from applications. In this stage, we will break it down into 6 minor stages. Let's proceed to requirements, which I have mentioned in the beginning of this video. The requirements can be found in the beginning of the forms or the announcement itself. Of course, you must meet all those requirements to be eligible to apply. Otherwise, you will get denied automatically. The requirements are be a Robux user in the group SCR, be in a guard rank, have access to Discord and SCR official Discord server, and be at least 13 years old. This is due to Discord's terms of service, but as I said earlier, this may change in training 2.0. Now let's proceed to details. In the next page of this form, this is where you put your details here, including your age bracket, Roblox username, and Discord user ID. Be sure to double check when entering your Roblox username and make sure that your Discord ID is correct because your username might be in the wrong spelling if you are not careful enough of what you're typing. That's basically it for this page. Let's proceed to the theory. This is where you start to answer. The description says, use the signaler guides and your previous knowledge to answer the following theory questions. The theory questions contain multiple choice questions where you can choose an option for your answer. There's also some questions where you can choose more than one option for your answer. You might be asking, if I got one incorrect answer, does it mean I'm gonna fail the whole application? No, you still have a chance to pass the theory stage. However, there's a passing mark for this. If there are 10 theory questions, let's say the passing mark is 7. If you have a score of 7 and above, you will pass the theory stage. However, if you have a score of 6 and below, you will unfortunately fail the theory stage and fail the application. And failed theories will not be passed on to app readers. You will still get the feedback after the results, not just from app readers. I will not show or give any examples of the theory questions, especially with an answer, but you get the idea of what will be in the theory stage. Let's proceed to scenario and critical thinking questions. This might be the hardest part of its application. It even requires you to take an action outside this application just to get the answer. The description says, answer the following scenario and critical thinking questions to the best of your ability. Read each question carefully before answering. The questions here contain a scenario that requires you to take action, and you will answer what you will do to take action in that scenario. Again, I will not show or give any examples of scenario or critical thinking questions, especially with an answer but to get the idea of what will be in the scenario stage. After answering all theory and scenario questions, be sure to double or even triple check your answers before submitting your application. Because if you look at the application history here, the total applicants are going higher and higher, making it at a peak of almost 2.9 thousand applicants, while the acceptance rate is going lower and lower which in the recent batch 
it has reached at only 7%. I was actually one of the 7% there. The Signaler application also opens 1-2 to two times a year, so it is important that your answers to those questions should be accurate, efficient, justification, and quality before submitting your Signaler application. Let's proceed to the application process. After submitting your application and the application has closed, this is where it starts the waiting game. This usually takes more than a month or two to entirely process the application before finally getting into the results. So you have to be patient. The result date will be announced after they have completed all the application process. Let's look at the details here. After the application has closed, one of the community managers will announce the status of the app reading. If you have changed your email or Robux username during the application process, make the team aware by creating a ticket through SDR assistance. An important reminder here is that asking for the date on which applications are released could result in a blacklist or your app being voided. Once the app reading status is complete, one of the signaler managers will announce the final stage of the app reading process before the actual results. There's also background checks for this one. If you fail background checks, you will fail the application. Let's now proceed to application results and feedback. Once we have reached the result time, the signaler managers will announce the amount of new trainee signalers. Each one of the signaler managers will send a list of passers for that match. If you get pinged on the list, you have passed the signaler application. You'll be given a trainee signaler role, finally giving you access to signaler launch and a signaler training channel for trainee signalers. However, the rank will stay as a guard until you have completed the signaler trainings. You can get the feedback for your application by reacting to JiveOff's message and you will get your theory scores, things you did well, areas of improvement, outcome, plus manager feedback if you have passed the upgrading stage. We will break it down and explain each one of them. First is your theory scores. It tells you how many correct answers you got for the theory questions. Things you did well. It tells you what things you did well on your answers for scenario questions. Areas of improvement. It tells you what you should do better for your answers. This is important, especially if you failed the application. Use the areas of improvement as a guide to improve for the next batch of signaler application. Outcome. This is the result if you have passed the upgrading stage. If you do, you will reach the manager stage which comes to manager feedback. You will get the feedback from a manager and the final result if you have passed the signaler application. On the other hand, if you did not get pinged on the list of passers, you have unfortunately failed the signaler application. Please do not be discouraged when this has happened to you. You will definitely improve your answers as you apply more because there is always feedback for you to improve. This has happened to me before actually. In the September 2021 batch, I applied for my first signaler application, which I did everything well, but I failed because of background checks, which disappoints me a lot for the amount of time. Four months later, I applied again for the January 2022 batch and failed again due to not having enough details to pass the upgrading stage. And then, eight months later, I applied for the September 2022 batch for the third time and finally passed the signaler application. This is because I was using my feedback to improve and it works. So keep trying and you will eventually pass the application if your answers and background checks were good enough to pass. You just have to be patient enough. We are halfway there. After passing the signaler application, you can now attend the signaler trainings leading us to stage 3, signaler training for practical. You might be wondering, where do I attend signaler training? Is it in a training tab in game? No. Why? The train is a Discord server. Oh, okay. Not anymore. Just, oh, just kidding. Anyway, I'll explain this soon. In practical training, you will learn the basics of signaling and practice on two different signaling desks. You will be given unlimited attempts to pass a practical, meaning if you fail practical many times, you can still attend practical until you pass. However, after weeks or months from the results of an application, the signaler managers will announce the practical deadline along with the assessment deadline. If you have reached the practical deadline without completing the practical training, you will be unfortunately be removed from the signaler training program, making you stay in your current rank. But if you have a valid reason, for example, you have a vacation or exams, you can request for a deadline next session. 
attention. You can do the same thing when you're on the assessment stage. So I recommend you do the training as early as possible if you're ready of course. This training session should take an hour long. In this stage, we will break it down into 4 minor stages. Let's proceed to signing up for practical training. Unlike the driver, dispatcher, and guard training, the signaler training works differently and you can't just join the training whenever it's open. It actually requires you to sign up for that training. You can sign up for practical training in the signaler training channel, just above the signaler lounge channel. The sign up works almost exactly as the shift sign ups. The format will look like this. Training your cinema, date, time, and the training host for that specific training session. Remember that there are slots for this. The amount of total slots depends on the amount of trainers. For example, one trainer equals four training slots. If the slots are full, you cannot sign up for that training anymore unless someone sends a cancellation request and is approved by the trainer. You can choose one of the available training sessions to sign up that works the best time for you. Then, you can join that training when your trainer sends a private server link and follow your trainer's instructions, leading us to the next stage, information. Once you join the training in the private server, follow the trainer's instructions, which should be mentioned that you need to spawn as a signaler at Stepford Central, then go to the bridge just above platform 10 and 11. Then, the training will start. Your trainer will mention the basics of signaling along with the demonstration and important reminders. You can ask your trainer at any time as well. The information section should take 30 minutes long. That's basically it. Let's proceed to the next one, hands-on. hands-on section will begin after the information section. This is where you and your fellow trainees will start to signal. Keep an eye on the chat because your trainer will whisper to you when it's your turn to signal. If it's not your turn to signal yet, you must drive within the active zone first for your fellow trainees. Once your trainer whispers to you, you may despawn your train and spawn as a signaler. You will be given reminders as well. Once you are ready, you can signal the first desk, starting with zone G. In the first desk, you will have 1 minute to set up, then 3 minutes to signal. Don't forget to inform your trainer once you've finished your setup. Your trainer will advise you on your signaling skills, setup status, etc. If you have any mistakes you just made, your trainer will inform you about it and do as they say. After signaling zone G, your trainer will tell you if you pass the first desk. Then, your trainer will inform you to move on to the second desk, which are either zone A, zone D or zone F. In the second desk, you will have 3 minutes to set up, then 5 minutes to signal. And it's the same thing I've just mentioned with the first desk, just different zones and time limits. After signaling the second desk, your trainer will mention your training results. After that, you may leave the server or drive within an active zone for your fellow trainees, which is recommended, unless you're the last trainee and that's it for the hands-on section. Let's proceed to the practical results and feedback. Your training result will be privately mentioned in-game and your trainer's Discord DMs along with the feedback. If you have failed the practical training, use the feedback to improve your mistake and better luck for the next one. Again, there are unlimited attempts for practical training. And if you have passed the practical training, you can now sign up and attend the final stage of the signaler training, leading us to the last major stage, the signaler assessment. In assessment training, test your signaling knowledge by signaling on a live server while being supervised. You will be given 3 attempts to pass at an assessment. If you fail the assessment training 3 times, you will be granted an additional 4th and final attempt after retaking the practical training. We will break it down into 3 minor stages. Let's proceed to signing up for assessment training. The sign-ups for assessment training works exactly as I have explained for practical training. The format has one little change however. There's a length now of 15 minutes. You will join at your scheduled time by going into your trainer's profile and joining their game. You will also receive the rank of signaler for the training since the training will be taken in a live server. Let's proceed to assessment training. Once you join the game, 
Follow your trainer's instructions. You will be given four zones to choose one. Zone A, Zone C, Zone D, and Zone F. After choosing, your trainer will mention reminders, and you can only ask the trainer before you can begin. Once you're on the desk, your trainer will not help you anymore. It's on your own now, but you're still being supervised, of course. And again, Remember to inform your trainer once you finish the setup. You will also have 12 minutes to signal. After leaving the desk, you will be asked to leave the game, leading us to the very last stage, assessment results and feedback. You will receive your results in your trainer's Discord DMs as well as the feedback. Again, if you failed, use the feedback to improve your mistake and better luck for the next one. Finally, if you have passed the assessment, your trainee signaler role will be removed and be the official signaler. You will be given access to the signaler role and have in-game moderation commands, but you need permission first from senior signalers and above. More information about this when you become a signaler. And this is where the journey ends. Welcome to the signaling team and good luck for signaling the railway network in SCR. I appreciate you if you have come this far. This video took a long time to make so you should consider liking and subscribing as well if you found this video helpful. And good luck aiming for signaler. Thank you so much for watching this video. Goodbye.